Alright, we are at 11th hour, finally. I, if, I will say that this has always been my favorite beer uh, to tell people about. And I just adore everything that they do here. You've been a little more of a critic. Slightly. So, first off, it hasn't changed since the last time I've been here. And I just want to point out, by the way, I haven't been here in probably three years. My birthday. Your birthday, that's very true. Uh, and the last time I was here, I'm going to be honest, uh, the beer here was very generic. It's the best way I can explain it. It was very plain. Um, you know, you had a Pilsner, you had an IPA, you had a Stout, you had all this other stuff, but there was no real identity to it. There wasn't really anything unique about it. Um, until about two years ago, I started seeing four and six packs coming out with all this sour series coming out and then I see the 11th hour tag with it and it's like when did this happen this is unexpected so clearly 11th hour kind of decided you know what we're gonna get the basics down to start with and then we're gonna produce some crazy stuff so and that's basically what I'm about to do right now uh, I'm drinking something called a paper birds which is a sour now for people who know me I'm not a big sour person you can even attest to this. Guys. Sour puss. Yeah, I'm a very much a sour puss. Uh, but I decided, you know what, 11th Hour clearly specializes in sours, so I'm gonna give this one a look. Uh, guy kind of described it to me as basically saying that there's a lot of different flavors in here. There's blackberries, there's raspberries, there's tangerines, which the first two spoke to me right away because I'm a big blackberry guy. I also love raspberries as well. So I clearly picked the right one right there. I love the color on it already. So cheers to this one. Smells good. Oh wow, that's good. It's over. Fuck no. Didn't have to take another sip, but it's not. I had to. So, obviously, with sours for me, the reason I don't like them is because I'm not a sour person. This has a little bit of a sour kick, but it's way more refreshing. It kind of reminds you of drinking like juicy juice in kindergarten in a weird way, but then you have that little kick at the end to kind of remind you that, oh, this will brighten up your taste buds a little bit. So I give this one a high grade right here. This is very, very well done. And clearly in the three years since I've last been here, 11th Hour has stepped their game up. So thank you 11th Hour for heeding my advice and doing something unique. They were always fucking awesome. Hold on. <laughs> oh wow, Kendrick Lamar just started playing. So this video probably won't be able to get on YouTube. Uh, we finally made it after a wonderful parallel park job by Greg too. My, uh, I think beer wise, this is my favorite place in the city. It's a very small venue, which I adore. Uh, had a lot of really good moments here. I like being able to see the bar stuff through the bar. I think it's amazing. Um, but 11th Hour, I think has some of the best cans in the city. I mean, they're up there. Grist obviously has an amazing can uh, style. Cinderland's obviously we just left there. It was amazing, but I'm doing the Cool Bear, which is a New England IPA, 7%. Uh, got it basically for the name because there's you know they have a moon series which I love with black cough but uh, the cold air Steven 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 yeah it's a New England IPA um, ridiculously smooth off the front which is something I always enjoy about them and smooth at the finish it's like a roller coaster of impact of flavor um, nothing 11th hour has ever brewed has been bad uh, I, I obviously challenged Cinderlands in our last video because I was like, alright, I don't know if I'm going to like this beer and try it. The thing is, I don't see many things up there aside from uh, a hard seltzer that kind of looks like hand sanitizer that I might not enjoy, but 11th Hour is uh, top three for me in terms of the city, so. Alright, so I'm now drinking a Moon Series Warm Moon, so the reason I got the Moon Series is because it was highly recommended by uh, my compadre over here. In that. Uh, Moon Series, you mentioned it's New England IPA. New England IPAs, for people who don't know, uh, obviously they have the bitter taste that you get from an IPA, but they also have kind of a juicy element to it. It's kind of going to be, you're going to have a, you're going to have definitely more of a yellow oranges type of body with it, but it's going to have more of a relaxed taste to it. You're not going to get the same bite that you're going to get from it with most IPAs. So, excited to try this. Ooh. Yeah, that hits. I'm glad it hits. <laughs> Proud of you. You still get you still get the same kind of bite that you get from a normal IPA, but it's mellowed a little bit. 
And that's what makes a New England IPA so much better because of the fact that for people who don't like that strong bite that you get from it in the back of your taste buds almost, this mellows it out. It gives you kind of like that clear type of feeling that goes down uh, your taste buds almost. So for anyone who doesn't necessarily like IPAs, this is the best introduction for them because you can get used to it. It's like a, it's like an introduction to IPAs if you want to. IPAs 101 if you will. So just throwing that out there. Moon Series at 11th hour. Big get. Big get. All right, so we are still at 11th hour. Uh, if I can give credit to the small archer, it's that I drank it watching the soccer game and didn't do a review on it. So this is small archer number two. This is his second um, right here, folks. It's funny because like Kolsch has kind of replaced lagers and pilsners in my brain of like the easy beer. Like Kolsch are just Kolsch are mm, the life foot of beer, man. I'm a big fan of it. Small archer. It's only 4.3 percent. It just is a good solid beer without any weird beer taste or anything. Um, I always appreciate when a Kolsch is on because it feels. It feels fancier than a Pilsner or longer. Like we discuss all the time on the show that Pilsners are the hardest beer to make because they're so simple in the taste. Uh, a Kolsch is, is, I believe, German, so Nick Faust don't yell at me. I believe a German rendition of it. Uh, my favorite Kolsch of all time is probably the Kolsch Running. I, don't even, I think it's from Schubru, just because of the name in the can. But. Yes. Man, it's just, there is a. There is not a bad flavor through the entirety of that set. Like, there's no, like, poop, there's no chills, there's no amp, there's no, like, oh, this is shitty. A good Kolsch is a good Kolsch, man, and this is a good fucking Kolsch. Small Archer, I love 11th Hour Brewery. I'll never see a bad thing about this place. Uh, I had a birthday here, at a couple different events here. Uh, adore, adore this brewery. 10 out of 10 recommendation to anybody in Pittsburgh. I attended the birthday, by the way, just saying. You did. I sent this tweet out, so I feel like I have to say, Nick Faust is our number one Cleveland Browns fan. That's all I can say right there. Mic drop. On who? Mic drop on who? No one even worth it. Wow. All right, Greg, we just left, I would say... I don't know if this was on me. I would say arguably uh, top three favorite breweries in terms of beer and location for me easily. You had some reservations that hopefully now you've kind of squashed. Yeah, so my reservations were honestly from when 11th Hour first opened. I'm just going to point that out right there. But then again, it's been about three years since I went there. Since then... They've kept the same in terms of ambiance, which I love. They're very localized. What do you like better, the, the ambiance or the decor? I love the ambiance. I love the decor. I spend a lot of time trying to figure out which one I like more, the ambiance or the decor. I find myself puzzled at most times trying to decide which I like more, I feel like the ambiance or the decor. I feel like they're one and the same, technically. You don't know what I'm talking about. Huh? No, you. I do not. Shout out to Marshawn Lynch, his first interview ever in Buffalo. Oh, yeah. TGI Fridays, the ambiance of the decor. Good point on that one. I guess one of us is just like a sports guy and the other one isn't. Clearly, yeah. But 11th hour, I give them a ton of credit because the last time I was there, I wasn't impressed with their beer selection. But the fact that they had so many unique styles right there and because they kept the vibe of being a local neighborhood hangout is still impressive on their part right there. They're such a big brewery in terms of Pittsburgh. And then the fact that you can get such unique stuff. It's pretty badass. I would absolutely come Shout out again. BVB. Shout out BVB. So I'd absolutely come again. Hey, no, no, no.